Hi everybody, today we will talk about a neoplasm that affects the kidney called nephroblastoma. Other names for it is Wilms tumor and embryonal nephroma. As it says in the name, nephroblastoma is a neoplasm that has embryonal origin and it affects the kidney. This neoplasm affects multiple species and under the microscope they all look identically the same. It doesn't usually have clinical findings with one exception that I will mention later, but on an x-ray you will see a large mass at the kidney level that is enlarging the abdomen. On cross-examination you will see there is a a large somewhat firm mass at one pole of the kidney compressing the remaining normal kidney this case from a dog in this case from a rabbit the pale color here is probably due to tissue fixation informally before we look at the tumor under the microscope let's quickly review the histology of the kidney kidney receives blood through renal artery which keeps on branching until it forms capillary tufts which are called glomeruli when the blood runs through the glomeruli it filters out the excess fluid and solutes into Bowman space which ultimately reaches the tubular system consisting of proximal convoluted tubules and distal convoluted tubules and other components that together form the urine. Now let's look at this neoplasm under the microscope. As you can see from this low magnification, there is a large expansile neoplasm compressing adjacent renal parenchyma. This neoplasm is well demarcated, partially encapsulated, and it's very densely cellular. At higher magnification, we can see that the neoplasm is composed of disorganized mixture of mesenchymal component, epithelial component, and blastemal component. Epithelial cells are arranged in tubules and glandular structures. They have distinct cell borders and abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, and nuclei are generally round with coarsely stippled chromatin and one distinct nucleoli. There isn't much anisocytosis, anisocaryosis, or mitosis. Mesenchymal cells, on the other hand, are composed of neoplastic cells arranged in streams and bundles. They have indistinct cell borders that contain fibrillar eosinophilic cytoplasm. The nuclei are generally elongated with finely stippled chromatin and indistinct nucleoli. Blastemal cells form nests and cords. They have scant amount of cytoplasm and indistinct cell borders with high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. Nuclei contain clumped chromatin. Occasionally, we'll see some tubules have papillary projections that resemble primitive glomeruli. The disorganized mixture of these three components along with the primitive glomeruli are distinct features of nephroblastoma. Finally, the adjacent tissue is compressed and congested. Nephroplastoma is a true embryonal tumor that arises from the primitive metanephric blastema. It is associated with a mutation of the Wilms tumor gene, which is a tumor suppressor gene. It is the most common primary renal tumor of pigs and chickens, but it also occurs in other species like dog and rabbit. This case we examined is actually from a rabbit. It can also affect the human. German shepherd dogs are unique in that sometimes this neoplasm can arise independently in the spinal cord, more specifically at the T10 to L two levels, and in which case it compresses the spinal cord and causes neurological clinical signs. Beside the major landmarks that we discussed, this tumor can take additional features. It's usually unilateral, affecting one pole of the kidney, but it can also be bilateral. The mesenchymal component can actually differentiate into a variety of mesenchymal tissues, such as striated muscles, collagen, adipose tissue, bone, or cartilage. The ratio of the three components can vary. When all three cell types are present in equal proportions, the neoplasm is referred to as triphasic or mixed, and a good prognosis is usually associated with more epithelial component. Finally, this neoplasm can be confirmed by immunohistochemistry using an antibody against Wilms tumor suppressor protein, WT1, which gives positive nuclear immune reactivity only in mesenchymal and blastemal components. There is a lot to learn about this neoplasm, and you can learn more about it by visiting the Joint Pathology Center website, which I added the link for in the description box. And if you have any comments, advice, or suggestion to make this channel a better channel, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with others to benefit from it. And please subscribe to the channel so you can get all the new videos. Thank you.